Hey, Deserve listeners, sister wives, let's check it out. Something that I am not good at yet. Um, we... Yeah, that's good. Cody admits he's not good at communication. That's a good sign that he's not coming to therapy defensive. He's willing to admit that he has trouble with something. That's good. Who do I hug first? Pat used to be our therapist in Utah, and it's been really hard to see her um, just because we're so far away. Sweetheart. I've missed her so much. She's incredible. Okay. So we're seeing that Pat, the therapist in Utah, is a hugger. Nothing wrong with that. It can be a wonderful thing. Seems like the clients are into that kind of thing. I'll hear people online saying that it's unethical for a therapist to hug their clients. It's not true. We don't have rules like that. It can be a problem, and there are issues of consent that should be considered, but there's nothing wrong with hugging. I personally don't initiate hugs, but if a client wants to hug me, I'll, I'll hug them briefly. Yeah, of course. So we're seeing that. We're also hearing that Christine really misses therapy. I'm just so curious as to how the therapy was helping behind the scenes, you know, because I've been really curious about the relationship between Christine and Cody and Christine and the rest of the sister wives. And you just got to figure that that's been heavily discussed and for Christine to find it useful. I'm just so curious. But, you know, I'm not entitled to all of the details. Pat, I have known the Browns for about five years. What's Mariah doing then? Oh, she'll be going up to Utah for oh, she, college. I'm not a polygamist. In fact, didn't even pay attention too much to polygamy until I had the opportunity to start working with the Browns. It's my biggest thing right now is... Okay, so we're learning that she's not polygamist and she uh, didn't really know much about polygamy until she started working with the Browns, the, the family here. So... I wonder how they, they must have sent out feelers to therapists to see how they would feel. And Pat must have said, yeah, I'm open to it. And then Pat decided to learn. It's similar for me with polyamorous people that polyamorous couples and, and polycules that in the beginning, 15, 20 years ago, I didn't know that much about it, but I was open to learning and I was open to working with clients and I knew enough to get going, but after the first five years of working with a number of polyamorous couples and polycules and individuals, uh, I learned a lot and I also spent time reading and talking with experts. So it sounds like for Pat, that's what she did. Trying to figure out who I am. Yeah. When I very first started seeing Pat, Cody and I decided that we needed to talk to somebody just to help with our communication skills so we could understand and communicate with each other. I was. I will say that I am glad that we didn't know about the therapy, not because of the therapy specifically, but it tells me that the family has a boundary as to what is shown on the show. Undoubtedly, the producers wanted to get into those therapy sessions. I'm guessing that the adults said no. Just a guess. So there's that. Or they didn't have the budget to film it. I don't know. But uh, someone had a boundary, <laughs> whether it was the producers or the family or both. And that is promising because that means that if they have that boundary, then they probably have other boundaries with the show, which means that some things are protected. Some things are left private, you know, because there are some reality shows and some YouTube family bloggers that, there seemingly are no boundaries, which cannot be healthy. He's very nervous about it. Here she is, a monogamous person. She has no idea how is she going to help me. The Browns are as they appear to be, complicated, sometimes trouble. I can take whatever. There were some angry voices and... I suppose another possibility is that Pat refused. Pat could have said no. I don't consent to having you in my office. You know, that, that's up there is a pretty good possibility as well. The family might have been up for it. The producers might have been up for it. And Pat was like, nope. And the family liked Pat enough that they didn't want to switch to a therapist that would be okay. I don't know. I don't know what the, what the deal is. Right now, we're hearing Pat speak openly about the clients. So hopefully the clients are okay with Pat 
even just revealing that she's been working with them, but also details about them. Years, but over time, many of those issues were resolved. So if you ever are in town... And you okay, so Pat is saying, you know, complicated, and there were a lot of issues, and a lot of those issues were resolved. So that sounds to me like Pat is saying that everyone, the five adults, worked hard to hear each other and to repair. That's what it sounds. And if Pat isn't in that religious group, then you would think Pat would say something like, and maybe Pat would think this but not say it on camera, that like, yeah, I mean, within their system, things are working out, but their system is toxic. So, you know, but I don't know if Pat would say something like that. But that's promising. I, there's a pretty good chance that Pat is speaking honestly. And she basically just said that, uh, they used therapy well and that they did resolve a lot of things, which tells me that the adults are trying and have the maturity and the differentiation and the goodwill to resolve things. Because some people don't show up to therapy wanting to resolve things <laughs> and can't be convinced to resolve things. So that's, that's a really good thing to hear. Great morning. Loved the meditation stuff. I, I want to make this kind of fun. Remember when we met last week, we sort of did some personality testing. Here are um, the results of our test. The other okay, it's good on two levels. One, I'm curious if I can determine which personality test system she was using. Also, if this identifies accurate dynamics and personality traits, I'm curious about that too. Day, and I'll kind of explain that. So if you look, Mary, you have some very strong traits that others in the family don't have. You marked eight in there. Eight is called a reformer. That is a person who has... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Enneagram. Let me look that up. Enneagram type eight is the challenger or the protector. <laughs> There's several different names, but what did she say? The reformer? Maybe I have it wrong. Mary, you have some very strong traits that others in the family don't have. You marked eight in there. Eight is called a reformer. That is a person who has not only the ability, but the compulsion in a sense that they are driven to speak truth. Well, that is really not what I thought. I could be reading it wrong, and of course, the edit only shows us a tiny percentage. But Christine seemed like, and maybe Robin, but mainly Christine, seemed like the the truth teller is the label that I put to it. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. So it's that time of year again. It's September, back to school, time to learn new things. And if you're a fan of this podcast, then I'm guessing you like to learn new things. But you might find that although you've learned a lot, you have a hard time applying this knowledge to better your life. This can be frustrating, you know, you, like you might know why you have a particular psychological issue, but you don't know how to use that knowledge to work on the issue. Well, that's where therapy comes in. A therapist can help you see how this knowledge applies to you specifically. And therapy also just gives you the time to focus on yourself outside of daily stressors. Well, one place you can find a therapist is at BetterHelp. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, it's definitely worth checking out BetterHelp. So rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Kirk today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Kirk. And who has not only the ability, but the compulsion in a sense that they are driven to speak truth. And this is part of the problem with some personality measures. I'm pretty sure this is not a scientifically based personality measure because you would never hear someone say that within my field of psychology. You, you would never present it this way. You would never use that language, or at least rarely you would. But uh, this is part of the problem is uh, it's, you know, you say certain phrases to people and they'll be like, oh my God, that's so me. And really everyone thinks that about themselves. Like the way that she worded it, if you said, you're really dedicated to justice and you're really dedicated to the truth and you really want to tell the truth. 
and people are like, oh my God, that's so me. It's, it's, it's everybody. <laughs> or you say to someone, you are always, or you say to someone, you're dissatisfied with something in your life and you really want to improve it, but you feel like something is blocking you. Do I have that right? And they're like, oh my God, you're psychic. So I'm a little, but you know, if it's useful, it's useful. So I, I'm, I'm curious if it's useful to Mary. Let's see. It looks, I don't know. She has kind of a neutral face, but looks like maybe she's agreeing with this. It's not a bad trait in you, although sometimes you may be a little brutal in doing it. You're gonna have a much stronger intensity. And when you feel something, it's almost overwhelming. Oh. That's weird, I mean, uh, that's, certainly true for everyone, right? You can be overwhelmed with feelings and you can want to say something, right? I imagine all of us have something that we would like to say, but we feel like we shouldn't or can't to people around us or something, and we can be overwhelmed by emotions. All of us can. But I will say that that does not fit the profile, at least that I was developing, that I, you know, I, you know and I'm only seeing a little bit. And again, I might be seeing through my own lenses that are all distorted and weird. But anyway, if, if it's useful, it's useful. So if Mary, if this is helpful for her, I'm just like, oh yeah, I, you know, if this has nothing to do with personality testing and more just to do with like validation. And for Mary, she's just like, yeah, I do have intense feelings. And, you know, yeah. So I could see this help because I, I feel like Mary doesn't actually express her emotions or ask for help. That's the way it kind of looks to me, rarely. And when she does, it doesn't usually go well. She's usually asking help from Cody mainly, and she's usually the helper of others. So if this redirects that more towards her, then great. What do I care what the system of personality measurement is? And then the other part of it is if she feels like, yeah, I guess there are some truths that I haven't been saying that I want to say, and for everyone in the room to recognize that, to see, oh, Mary does have emotions. But the profile, in terms of the way I see it, fits much more with Christine. <laughs> Maybe Christine also tested that type as well. I don't know. Very painful, difficult conversations to the point that you felt like you did not know how you were going to get through the tunnel to the other side. And then all of a sudden you burst through it. You know, it's, it's like it fights with everything <sighs> that I am to have to act different make it more comfortable for everybody in the family. Right. That's what I thought. <laughs> she's the pleaser. She's not the reformer. She's the, in fact, let me, I, I think this is Enneagram, but let me, let me look at the Enneagram different types. So the reformer is number one <laughs> um, in terms of this website, which is the Enneagram Institute. Uh, yeah, I would say she's number two, which is the helper. Right? Am I looking at this? Right? Or nine, nine peacemaker. Two and nine, I think, are heavily correlated, obviously, of the helper and the peacemaker. So, yeah, the peacemaker is easygoing, self effacing, receptive, reassuring, agreeable, and complacent. That's, to me, definitely her. The reformer is uh, uh, the rational, idealistic type, principled, purposeful, self controlled, and perfectionistic. Huh. Well, that's not the way that that therapist really described it. So if they are in the Enneagram, which I think they are, uh, let me go through this uh, in terms of the way I see it, which is uh, a random YouTuber watching a television show that's edited heavily. So take that with that in mind, meaning that it's meaningless. <laughs> that's the point, because <laughs> I'm not in the room and I'm not assessing them. But the edit, it looks like she's the peacemaker and then I would say that uh, Christine, well, if we go in order, Janelle is the uh, individualist or the achiever, maybe. So the individualist is, they say, the withdrawn type. Expressive, dramatic, self-absorbed, and temperamental. No, <laughs> that's, that's not Janelle in terms of the edit. Um, the investigator, the intense cerebral, t I don't even really like this system because it's claiming that these things are separate things. Anyway, uh, perceptive, innovative, secretive, and isolated. Yeah, I think that fits 
Janelle the most, the investigator. Intense. I mean, I wouldn't say she's cerebral, but she's um, secretive and isolated, seemingly. Because um, you also have the challenger, uh, the powerful dominating type. No. Um, so then if we go f with uh, Christine, I would say Christine is uh, the reformer. No. Helper. No. Well, maybe. Helper. The caring interpersonal type. Dem d demonstrative, generous, people-pleasing, and possessive. Okay. It's weird that those qualities are put together. It's not really my understanding of personality, but what are you going to do? Uh, the achiever, no. Individualistic, no. The investigator, no. That's that's Janelle that I, I said. Um, the loyalist, committed, uh, security-oriented, engaging, responsive, anxious, and suspicious. Maybe the loyalist, enthusiastic. The busy, fun-loving type, spontaneous, versatile, distractible, and scattered. Yeah, so I would say loyalist and enthusiast for Christine. And also the challenger, the powerful dominating type, self-confident, decisive, willful, and confrontational. Yeah, I would say that Christine is six, seven, and eight. She's a loyalist, and she's a enthusiastic, loyal challenger. <laughs> and then if we do Robin, Robin's hard to figure out. In terms of the edit so far, uh, it's hard to know what she's reacting to and who she really is. But a reformer might be her. Principled, purposeful, self-controlled, and perfectionistic. Robin seems a bit perfectionistic, I think. And then the achiever, adaptive, excelling, driven, image conscious. I could see that being Robin. And you notice that none of these types are bad, right? They're just like... There's pros and cons to each one, which isn't really the way personality works. <laughs> you know, like uh, there are personality traits that are definitely bad, right? Like being a psychopath or lacking empathy, being narcissistic. There's not a pro. <laughs> I mean, you can argue that there are minor silver linings, but really it's it's not a balanced thing. Anyway, um, yeah, I would say that uh, Robin is the achiever reformer. And so, and then Cody, Cody is the self-centered one. <laughs> the, uh, so individualist, ex expressive, dramatic, self-absorbed, and temperamental. Uh, individualist, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say that kind of fits for him, but it's not exactly the way I see him. Um uh, maybe achiever for him as well, individualist and achiever. And then I also see him kind of as a people pleaser in a certain way. Uh, let's see, is that uh, is that right? Do I have, am I looking at spontaneous, versatile, distractible? I could see him also being an enthusiast. Okay, so let's see how this goes. I don't see myself going into this and analyzing, hmm, well, I better manage her this way or something like that. I'm not seeing that. However, I do see that what this does for us is make us empathetic. If somebody has an issue, we all have to accept that and be patient with it. Huh. Uh, I, it sounded like Cody, let's rewind. I think Cody was saying, I don't really s agree with this system, but if this discussion is helping us to be more empathetic, that's a good thing. I think that's what he's saying. That's right. <sighs> that I am to have to act different, make it more comfortable for everybody in the family. Yeah, I just want to really emphasize that. That that doesn't sound like principled, purposeful, self-controlled, and perfectionistic, right? What that sounds like to me is the agreeable, reassuring, receptive, and complacent, right? Which is the peacemaker. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, uh. I don't see myself going into this and analyzing, hmm, well, I better manage her this way or something like that. I'm not seeing. That's not what Cody is saying. Cody is saying, I don't see myself looking into this and saying, oh, I'm going to use this how to manage, but I'm going to use this as a way to understand and have empathy. That's good. 
All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.